Okay, so I want to uh, welcome everyone to come to our second Lingyin Buddhist Studies lecture series. My name is Jiang Wu. I'm director of Center for Buddhist Studies. We want to thank Lingyin Temple in Hangzhou, China for supporting this great event. And before I introduce today's uh, guest speaker, and uh, the topic, I want to say a few words about uh, the rules for uh, meeting in a virtual room like this. Uh, you probably already noticed we are recording this lecture. So right now we are doing that for internal purpose. And uh, when we start the discussion session, we're not going to record anything. So when we finish lecture, uh, we we're going to call your name. So please raise your hand if you have any question. So you can do that through chat, I believe. And or also if you turn on your video, you just wait to us or send a uh, question through chat to either Jacqueline and I. So we're going to be able to uh, notice your uh, willingness to ask questions. And that, that's a very simple rule for uh, this kind of an online lecture format. Okay, so without further delay, let me introduce today's speaker, uh, who is not a stranger either. Right? It's actually is our old friend, Professor uh, Yi Xun Huang. Professor Huang is a professor in the Department of the Buddhist Studies at Foguang University, Taiwan. She received her PhD from the University of Virginia and specializes in Chan and Pure Land Buddhism. She has published rare texts by Chan master Han Yue, yeah, whose full name is Han Yue Fata. Right? Today, Professor Huang is going to talk about him. Right? So the title is Rare, uh, the book title is Rare Texts by Chan master Han Yue in Ming, uh, I believe it's the first volume. It's going to be uh, several volumes coming up. The second book she published is a study of Chan Dictionary, the Zhu Ting Shi Yuan. The third book is a study of Chan Master Xue Dou. And uh, uh, the last one is her dissertation, I believe. Integrating Chinese Buddhism, a study of Yongming Yan Shou's Guan Xin Xuan Shu. So Professor Huang also published many articles in both Chinese and English. And without further delay, let me introduce uh, today's topic. Professor Huang going to present a lecture. The title of her like lecture is Chan isn't just meditation. Chan Master Han Yue. Chan Master Han Yue's attitude towards sutra teachings in the Ming. Please join me welcoming Professor Huang. So Professor thank Huang. You. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Wu for arranging this long distance talk and welcome everyone who participates in uh, this event. Uh, the topic of my talk is Chan isn't just meditation. Um, it's about a Chan master Han Yue's attitude towards Sutra teaching in the Ming Dynasty. But before getting into the topic, in order to show you the rare texts I use in this talk, I need to introduce our Buddhist Center's rare book collection at Foguang University. Um, so for people who didn't have a chance to come to Foguang University in Taiwan, these are some uh, landscape uh, photos of Foguang University. It's on a mountain and you can see the ocean from uh, the compass. Uh, compass and which is exactly different from the landscape of University of Arizona, I believe. Um, so uh, from 
2016 to 2020, our Buddhist center did a research project um, entitled Texts and Studies on East Asian Buddhism from the 16th to 19th centuries. One of our purposes was to collect real Buddhist texts from the 16th to 19th century. Um, the reason is that the Jiaxing Canon printed from 1579 to 1676 in China is an open canon. This means that the, its printing center carved the wood blocks and printed the new text whenever they were received. Therefore, there was never a complete catalog for Jiaxin Canon. So, Ming Jiaxin Canon uh, were reprinted from 1983 to 2016. So, uh, there are about 700 new works by Buddhist masters or laity from the Ming and Qing dynasties that are not included in any other previous Buddhist canons. However, this is not a final number yet. Since our Buddhist center started the research project in 2016, 2016. Until now, we have received or collected another 300 new texts not found in the previous printed Jiaxin canons. And um, we collected these Buddhist real texts from more than 220 locations in Japan, China, and Vietnam. And these 10 real texts were transmitted, recarved on wood blocks and printed in Vietnam, which we cannot find neither in China nor in Japan. These are, as you can see in the pictures, uh, these are wood blocks we saw at a Buddhist temple in Vietnam. And one of the 10 rare texts we found is Han Shan De Qing's commentary on the treaties of hundred dharmas. So there are very precious uh, real books. And besides the Buddhist rare books uh, collection, since we don't have the copyright to publish the simile copies, so what we do is to publish edited version with a study of the text. We have published five books so far, including a Ch Chinese translation of Suiki Sensei's book on Japanese, um, Japan early modern Buddhism, which just came out last week. And so coming back to my topic, among the 300 Buddhist rare texts, uh, six of them uh, were by Ming Chan Master Han Yue, which is the material I used to publish real books by uh, Chan Han Yue, part one. This book includes six real texts. And in my talk, I'm going to introduce the first interesting text Han Yue's guiding words on the Zizhen Zhuan. I first found uh, Han Yue's guiding words from Shanghai Library in 2016. But after receiving it from Shanghai Library, I soon found out that the last page stopped at fascicle five, but there should be 10 fascicles. As you can see from the picture, the second part of this text is missing due 
due to uh, water damage. And so I was really heartbroken when I, see, when I saw that. Um, but two years later, I had a chance to go to um, the Sutra Repository Hall at Xi Yuan Temple in Suzhou. Um, as you can see in the picture, um, the upper one, this is how I stood there and took photos for the real books for three days. And then um, on the last day, I saw a pile of real books and a tag say, guiding word incomplete. Uh, my heart almost stopped and I opened it. It's the missing, it's missing classical one to five, but fortunately it contains classical six to 10. And so now Han Yue's guiding words on the Zhizhen Zhuan is complete in my book. And so let me introduce the author of this rare book, Time Master Han Yue, briefly. Han Yue was born in a Confucian family and so was very well read. And it, at uh, age 15, he wanted to leave household life and ask his father for permission. His father said, I would let you become a monk as long as you don't go out to beg for food. So as we can see, even when it gets to the Ming Dynasty, monks begging for food is still a problem for Confucians. And after becoming a monk, Han Yue's biggest difficulty is to find a suitable Chan master to study with which is quite a common problem described in Professor Wu's book, Enlightenment in Dispute. So what Han Yue did to help himself was first to read Buddhist sutras. Han Yue says in one of his works that, if you don't have a master or a lineage, you need to understand the teaching in the sutra first so that you don't fall into heretical views. And second, Han Yue practice Ling Ji, Chan Ling Ji's Watou practice, which is meditation on critical race. And third, at age 40, Han Yue entered a 100 day retreat and finally obtained enlightenment without a master's guidance. The first practice shows the importance of the role of uh, sutra teachings in Han Yue's early life. And, um, but before we move on, let me in, do a quick review on the role of sutra teachings in Chan Buddhism. Um, there is a widely held opinion that Chan masters discourage the study of sutras. Um, their reason is that if you have attachment to sutra teachings, then it becomes an obstacle on the way to gaining insight. Therefore, there's a fa very famous slogan appear in the Song Dynasty that Chan is separate from sutra teachings and is not reliant upon the written word. Uh, how, and some Chan masters are even famous for burning sutras. But I have to say that uh, in the history of Chan Buddhism, as I know, there might be only two or three Chan masters who really burn uh, sutras. Uh, and they make the, this act very famous in Chan Buddhist history. Um, however, in Chan history, there are also Chan masters who have never abandoned su the sutra teachings. Uh, the early famous examples are Zhongmi in the Tang Dynasty, uh, who matched, matched 
matches um, sutra teachings with Chan sect and Yongming Yansho in the Five Dynasties, who believes that myriad good deeds lead to a common end, including sutra teachings, which is a topic of uh, Professor Welter's book. Uh, and besides, you can also always find a lot of sutra teachings in the Chan literature, such as the recorded, uh, the records of Lam and recorded sayings. And especially uh, Chan master Hui Hong in the Song wrote several works to demonstrate the value of literary Chan in order to emphasize learning Chan through written words. And Hui Hong wrote the Zhizhen Zhuan, a commentary on wisdom and enlightenment to explain sutra teachings and demonstrate their value. Then in the Ming Dynasty, Chan Master Han Yue continued to add his guiding words on the Zhizhen Zhuan. Therefore, the Zhizhen Zhuan is an excellent example showing the role of Sutra teachings in Chan Buddhism due to its long lasting influence from the Song to the Ming dynasties. And besides, uh, the Zhizhen Zhuan has a special role in Han Yue's life. After his self claim enlightenment at age 40, he used Chan Master Lin Ji's teachings from uh, Hui Hong's Zhizhen Zhuan to verify his own enlightenment. Um, furthermore, in the introduction to his guiding word on the Zhizhen Zhuan, uh, Han Yu emphasized that from now on, people who attain enlightenment themselves and use this text to verify their enlightenment. And so that's why uh, Han Yue first taught his disciple, the Zhizhen Zhuan, in the meditation hall at Sanfeng Temple in Changshu from 1660 to 1620. Um, by the way, the portrait of Han Yue is the earliest painting of Han Yue uh, discovered by Gong Yi, I don't know where he is in or not, uh, from uh, Changshu's city library when we went there uh, in 2016. And this is an old photo of Sanfeng Si, and now they have a new Buddha hall. And with uh, this picture, I just want to prove that I really went there and climbed up the rose uh, stairs instead of just getting uh, the cheap the cheap pictures from uh, Google. And after you uh, get to the top of the, the temple, you can see the view of uh, the whole uh, Changshu city. It's a beautiful uh, temple. And then um, now let me uh, quickly look at um, the layout of uh, Han Yue's guiding work. Uh, the woodblock printing use a triangle slide to indicate Han Yue's guiding words. Then Han Yue's guiding words are followed by the cases quoted from Hui Hong's Zhizhen Zhuan, which are then followed by Hui Hong's own comments. And so if you look at the style, uh, Han Yue's guiding words is similar with an introductory pointer in the blue, the blue cliff record, Bi Yan Lu. Uh, furthermore, uh, the woodblock printing adapts the standard format of Chinese commentary tradition to indent Han Yue's guiding words and Hui Hong's comments one character lower from the top boundary line. And however, although Sutra 
teaching play an important role in Han Yue's life. As a charm master, Han Yue also insists that giving sutra teachings still obstruct people from attaining enlightenment by planting the concept of dharmas in their minds. This is why Han Yue warns Chan practitioners should not take the meaning of ultimate teaching in the sutra as ultimate meaning. To Han Yue, Chan masters should not cite te sutra teachings to explain Chan practice like lecture masters. Sutra teachings could be used to supplement, supplement Chan practice only when the Chan master has eliminated his or her emotion and reasoning and has no attachment. So Han Yue has the most detached attitude among the masters, Chan masters identified as defenders of sutra teachings. If you are interested in this uh, topic, uh, you can read uh, page 392 in my book. And then as a result, uh, Han Yue continued to use sutra teachings to supplement uh, Chan practice and insisted on teaching the Zhizhen Zhuan from 631 to 635 up to the last year of his life, despite the harsh criticisms from his master Ming Yun. Um, Han Yue's using of a uh, guiding words, uh, the purpose is to attract and convert Confucian literati uh, was very successful. Uh, many Confucian literati became his disciples or lay followers. Then in 1634, Han Yue's master, Mi Yun, accused Han Yue of turning Chan Monastery into lecture monastery by teaching the Zhizhen Zhuan at several monasteries. Second, he violates the Chan taboo of causing more cognitive hindrance for his audience. This is the first uh, controversy discussed in Professor Wu's uh, Enlightenment in Dispute. And so Han Yue's guiding words has been missing for about 400 years. Now we finally have a chance to do more research on this re newly discovered material that caused the controversy. If you want to uh, know more details about this controversy, you can read on my, uh, the page uh, 393 in my book. And so uh, the controversy between Han Yue and Mi Yun and Han Yue um, actually caused a downfall for Han Yue's lineage. After Han Yue's death, China became Qing Dynasty governed by non-Chinese, the Manchus. And so some Chinese literati withdraw from public service and escape into Chan. And so uh, Emperor Yongzhen, um, a self-claimed um, Chan master, interfered uh, this controversy between uh, Mi Yun and Han Yue and decided that Han Yue's lineage was heretical. And so uh, Yongzhen decreed a repression in 733 on Han Yue's lineage. Some of Han Yue and his disciples' works were destroyed and Han Yue's disciples were uh, ordered to step down from their abbot's position. 
uh, fortunately, uh, Yongzhen died two years after his uh, repression uh, in uh, 1735, and Han Yue's lineage was, was uh, restored shortly after that. This might be the reason I was able to find many Chan texts belong to uh, the Sanfeng lineage and other lineage, Chan lineage, at Xiyuan Temple. Uh, we now finally have the opportunity to do new research on Han Yue and his disciples and other Ming Dynasty, Qing Dynasty Chan masters. Uh, I hope that future research on these rare books from the Ming and Qing Dynasty will help us to add the last piece to the puzzle completing the study of Chinese Buddhism in Imperial China. And so this is the, the picture um, taken um, uh, the day I found um, the second part of uh, Han Yue's Guiding Words. As you can see, I was very happy in the picture. Um, and so uh, I have published uh, my book, um, uh, my, uh, an article uh, in English uh, with the uh, Journal of Oxford Center for Buddhist Studies in uh, 2018. So uh, I'll send a PDF to uh, Jacqueline. And so if you are interested uh, in this article and in the topic in details, you can ask uh, my PDF from uh, Jacqueline. And furthermore, if you are interested in this um, topic, uh, you can find a list of uh, real books collection at uh, university, at Foguang University's uh, uh, center's website. Uh, if you go to this website, you can find a PDF on the website. And if you open it, uh, you can see some Buddhist uh, titles, uh, books title uh, of our real books collection. And why uh, it's incomplete? This is because um, uh, we are not allowed to announce some of the real books we found from Japan. And so we can only announce some of them that we uh, found in uh, from China and Vietnam. But you can see all of them if you come to our center. So I hope uh, you will have a chance to come to Taiwan to use the, uh, them in the future. And so um, thank you for listening. This is the end of my talk. Thank you very much, Professor Huang. Uh, so you have collected uh, so many new texts. Uh, a lot of them we haven't seen before. Mm. And uh, today you, you offer your analysis of just one of them. Right? Mm. Thank you very much. And as uh, Professor Huang already mentioned, there's a paper already published. Right? Uh, so let's see, uh, Professor Huang, you still have time to elaborate yes. some of the points. Mm. You, you, if you want to kind mm. of uh, okay. explain more, we, we definitely have time, right? Right, uh, okay. Mm. So I can add um, some more points about um, what we can do in the future mm. for future research. Um, we are now quite clear about uh, Han Yue's works, um, and I'm going to publish uh, a second book on uh, Han Yue's rare books in 2022. And um, so we will get to know about Han Yue more. But then how about Mi Yue? Uh, what is his attitude uh, toward uh, Sutra teachings? And it's very interesting that, um, although in my talk, um, I say something about uh, Mi Yun criticizing uh, Han Yue. However, in, uh, you all know uh, Professor Lin Zhengguo, right? Professor Li from Zhengzhou University. Um, he also published uh, an article on Mi Yun's work. And um, it's very interesting that 
uh, Miriam also got into a debate with uh, an, another uh, Chan master. And then when he was trying to explain some uh, Chan concepts, he used Yogacara's thoughts to explain the concept. And so that Chan master accused him that you violate our Chan principle by using sutra teachings. And so it was very interesting for me to hear that Mi Yun actually is very familiar with Chutra teaching himself, but then he criticized Han Yun by doing that. And so that's why uh, Mi Yun's work is also very worth uh, doing research on. And so um, uh, I will, uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, Professor Chen Qing, I, will, I don't know whether he's on the line or not. Um, uh, he is going to also publish uh, real books, uh, a book on Mi Yun's uh, real books in 2022 with me. And so by that time, we will also get to know Mi Yun better. And so then, so that's why uh, for 400 years, we will finally get to know, uh, you know, what was going on uh, during the first uh, controversy. And then the other thing is, um, I'm always curious about um, uh, Yongzhen's repression on uh, Sanfeng lineage because this actually happened 100 years after me, uh, after Han Yue's death. So his, Han Yue is long gone already. So why after 100 years, suddenly uh, Yongzhen uh, got into uh, this controversy and then had uh, repression on Sanfeng Si. So I'm really interested in, in uh, what was going on with uh, Sanfeng lineage in the Qing Dynasty. Why they met uh, Yongzhen mad about their lineage. And so I'm happy to tell you that we actually found, uh, also found many uh, real books written by Sanfeng's second, third, and fourth generation. So if we dig more uh, deeper into those texts, we might be able to find out more reasons for Yongzhen's uh, repression, I think on Sanfeng Si, uh, Sanfeng Pai. And so I think the reason is much more complicated than what we know now. So it's really worth uh, doing more research on this topic. So this is what I can add more for visual research. Mm. This is a very valuable comment. I think mm. uh, Professor Fang uh, very successfully highlighted the importance of this monk. Once again, this monk's name is uh, Han Yue Fa Zhang. So his another name is uh, Three Peaks, right? Sanfeng. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, Professor Wang mentioned about emperor was involved, right? His teacher, they had debate. And also, uh, it seems a lot of the Buddhist teachings, right? Sutra reading, uh, including using of logics, have been used for in the debate and controversy. Okay. So, thank you very much.